Should we lock groove it there? I won't yeah. another squeal. Lock groove lock it. it. Yeah. And I'll show you what that sounds Is that what you do, a lock groove? Yeah. At the very end? Yeah. I'm just wondering if you So the sticker goes inside the old Is there a runoff? Oh, there we go. So I've held it just there. You know, I think awesome. this is the first time I've ever seen a record being made. Is that right? That's yeah. the first time I've ever seen it. Yeah. 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 Doesn't happen yeah. every day, you know. But I'm just going to play this. My neighbor does it quite often, actually. It's just on Sundays. Bobby. <laughs> 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 uh, Your neighbor makes it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, this, 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 just three cameras in the green. Yeah. 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 distortions in that with that was like that sounded to me like a um not a cornet a um a saxophone was it what I it's a tenor saxophone yeah yes. now and that saxophone there so it was distorting it would sound a bit like this um, oh, yeah i was thinking the radio waves the frame waves well it'd be a fairy sound oh no no how can i do it um the B A Z sort of sound oh, right. with the hop. Like, oh, I'm put the B A Z at the edges of the sound. <coughs> and that's a distortion. And what is it? Oh, sorry. What? what? And what, what is that sound actually created by? Like the, the when there is distortion on a vinyl record? What? It's very much of this. Uh huh. And it's hitting into the other track. Oh right, so it's like bleeding, bleeding across the groove. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> or maybe I reckon there's one. Um, it's a free DVD as well. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's like crystalline. Is your. Hey, Peter. Someone said some of these are mono and some of these are stereo. The delays. Are they all stereo or mono? These ones here have got a very wide, wide. Um, yeah. Tracking response. Yeah. Yeah. Right, but these will take stereo signals in some of them. But the other ones yeah. are so old that they're almost like a mono signal. But the, um, the problem I get is with the older gear, there's like a um, frequency. It's almost like getting the mixer and going with the top one. Like this. Whereas it should be like that separating up. And what's happening is with those ones, you've got a groove like that, and the left hand side is going like that, the right hand side is going like that. See? So and you can't get quite full stereo, it's shifted in a way. So it's more of a the plastic, yeah. this plastic here, it's got what they call a rebound. And if I can get a, an old record and show you what's happening. 
Oh, no, I might be able to draw it. So, you can give me one CD from your label and one CD from mine. What's happening is the left hand and the right hand wall is in this area here, it's rebounding off the next track. You've got a little lump there, like that, and it comes down and back. And what's happening is the frequency response from here and here is almost modifying it because we're getting a um, like this into this track and it's, um, it's like getting the left hand and right hand track and trying to add them together oh yeah there you go <laughs> so it's um yeah and it's in the plastic itself too and i'll show you what's happening with it i just no if you spin it up this is what's happening with it it's only one side it's almost doing so it's like that's that's a geometry like like yeah think about it like some kind of geometry maybe between these two lines maybe no, no, the depth is the three variables are the speed of the record. So that's the depth of one groove, and that's and that's the depth of the other groove. Speed of the record and the speed of the shadow. With the distortion we were talking about earlier on, what's happening is we're getting um, a bleed over into that track through this wall, just in here. And what's happening with the stereo effect on the left and right is we're getting vibrations coming up the left end and right end channel and modifying quite a lot of this area here, which is where we should be separating in here. Now with the polyvinyl, their plastic isn't like this. It's not going to do this. What it does is the polyvinyl is stiff like glass. So we're talking about a plastic here that's too soft, really, for a, a um, perfect separation of sound. Yeah, that's the third. But what could I do? Because in the early days we had no. There was no other plastic that I could cut. It was perfect like that. You cut on metal, but I've seen some. You cut on some Vicky Brown, like on copper and. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I had a go at that. Yeah, for her. Yeah, yeah, Vicky Brown. That's right. Yeah. Oh, do you know Vicky? Oh, I saw her artwork. Oh, okay, yeah. She had me cutting into all sorts of wild pieces of stuff. Yeah. You know those, um, those really thin acetate sheets that you, to, you can get in like a uh, yep. box and stuff like this? Yep. That's a hard plastic. Very hard. It looks soft. And that would give a good stereo separation. And they used to press those. What are they called? Acetate. They're called flexi discs. Come to the magazine, they were oh, oh, those, yeah, yes, yeah. They were made of acetate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I need to know that one variable. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I suppose I must be used to, like, for, like, some things. Rainbow Records first used to make those in, um, yeah. on a Spanish press. So we're only taking snapshots. Yeah. Yeah. We're only taking snapshots. Yeah. Actually, I think I might have two of those under machine number two down there, actually. I've got I've got one of the old Elvis Presley ones, the aluminium with the sprayed nitrous, yeah, there's lacquer. And I've got one of those things you were talking about, a flexi disc down there. But, yeah. <laughs> but no, the stereo system here is very limited compared with what um, a vinyl would be. Yeah. And Corduroy did say that too.